Hey everybody, today we are debating whether or not Islam is harmful and we are starting right now with Apostate Prophet's opening statement. Thanks so much for being with us, Apostate Prophet. The floor is all yours. Hello everybody and welcome. Thank you so much James and uh, thank you so much Muji for uh, arranging and agreeing to this debate. Today we want to discuss whether Islam is harmful. The original idea of this debate was, um, I forgot to turn my timer on again, <laughs> give me a second, was uh, whether extremists represent Islam or not. When I first looked at the title I thought to myself, uh, what exactly is extremist? We first have to define what extremist means. Uh, according to J.M. Berger, who is a social scientist, uh, extremism is uh, hard to define. It's not easy to see, but it usually describes a group of people that has a um, that has a counter an ext an extreme position that is counter to the position that is held within the society, and that uh, tends to radically shift uh, the ways of society, mostly in violent ways or in very totalitarian ways, toward a different worldview. According to uh, Lynn Davies. Uh, extremism means having no tolerance and imposing your own beliefs upon uh, the society in order to change it, mostly through radical means, meaning uh, violent or, again, uh, suppressing other people. In the West, we have this notion that uh, there are moderate Muslims and there are extremist Muslims. This is not really a notion that uh, is the same between the West and the Islamic societies. When we talk about moderate Muslims in the West, we are talking about Muslims who don't uh, resort to violence and don't resort to means of overthrowing the society and imposing their own beliefs. Uh, the issue is something like moderate and extreme also exists within Islam, but it doesn't really exactly mean the same thing. There is a concept called wasatiyah, which, which, which is uh, the middle path, which is also mentioned in the Quran. And in Islamic tradition, it means that uh, the, the middle path, the moderates, are those who follow exactly the way of Islam, whereas extremists are uh, on both sides, uh, those who try to uh, get rid of the laws of Islam and who try to secularize and uh, make society free. And then there are those extremists who um, relentlessly kill and murder and destroy society, including fellow Muslims. And what's funny about this is that um, uh, Muji here, uh, my opponent, would uh, say that certain people like Islamic extremists are extremists from his point of view. But uh, people who have watched debates on this channel will remember that several weeks back Daniel Kikichu, for example, who is a Muslim extremist, also uh, described human rights activists as extremists. So from his point of view, human rights activists are extremists. If you ask ISIS, and I'm not exaggerating, ISIS and uh, Al-Qaeda and other organizations like that will also say that they themselves are not extremists, they are moderate, they are the middle path, whereas uh, those who come with a lighter interpretation of Islam are extremists, and those demons who do not exist are extremists. So uh, we have to really get to what extremism is. When it comes to being harmful, humans have the desire to flourish and to be happy. To uh, It is the Aristotelian belief that um, or idea that humans seek flourishing, humans seek ultimate happiness. Uh, I think it is fairly understandable that humans have this intrinsic desire to live and to flourish and to survive. And there are certain ideas that do not really serve that purpose. When it comes to Islam now, we have uh, the fact that Islam is very much anti-intellectual. In Quran verse 7, chapter uh, 174, it says that uh, Allah made people for hell who don't uh, believe and who don't think. In 24 verse 51, it tells people to obey Allah and his messenger mindlessly. In chapter 33 verse 36, it uh, tells you that you should uh, obey Muhammad and Allah no matter what they say, very much. Islam is intolerant. When we look at uh, Quran chapter 9 verse 29, we find the command to fight those who don't believe in Islam and who don't believe in Allah and the last day, who don't follow uh, the Islamic laws, and to fight them until they are subdued and they pay protection money in exchange for their lives. Uh, we have this further defined in uh, chapter 9 verse 30. Uh, this is used against Christians and Jews because of their beliefs. In chapter 9 verse 28, it is 
Pharisees said that polytheists should be kept out of holy lands because they are filthy. In chapter 9, verse 23, it says that you should not take your fathers and your family as friends if they prefer disbelief over uh, belief. And therefore, in Islamic law, and we can find this in the classical books of Islamic law throughout Islamic history, uh, such as the Mughni and Mughni, most people will, will, will not have any idea what these things are, but Muslims and classical Muslims know that these are traditional classical books of Islamic law. Uh, Reliance of the Traveler, which you can find in English, and many of these uh, classical Islamic books will define and tell you that uh, it is a Muslim's duty, it is the, the, the duty of the Muslim community to keep the Muslims high and to suppress the disbelievers and to have them humiliated, even if they are part of your society, because that is what uh, how you are supposed to treat them according to the Islamic texts. Uh, Islam is very much focused on war. In a, an agreed upon uh, narration from Muhammad found in Riyadh al-Salihin, it says that uh, one of the major sins is to flee the battlefields. <laughs> I mean, you are supposed to not only join every war for Islam, fleeing the battlefield also does not just mean uh, it is sinful, it means you will go to hell for that, definitely. Because how dare you flee the battlefield? You are supposed to fight for Allah. In, uh, Sahih Bukhari 2.9.26, uh, there is the major notorious prophecy that in the future you will fight and kill the Jews and they, were, and they will be behind stones and trees and even the stones and trees will tell you to come and fight and kill the Jews. According to um, Sahih Muslim 22, uh, a very famous hadith which uh, is undeniable, Muhammad himself said that he has been sent to fight the people until they testify that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is his messenger, which is why fighting for Islam has been seen as a duty of the Muslim community forever, including in the famous uh, book Muqaddimah of the forerunner of sociology, Ibn Khaldun, in, in his masterpiece, he says that what makes Islam distinct is that it has the that it gives the, the leader of the Islamic uh, nation, of the Islamic community, the duty to lead the Muslims to uphold Islam and to spread Islam by uh, preaching or by force. Islam has apostasy laws, meaning uh, Someone who leaves Islam, like myself, cannot even think of being happy, cannot even avoid harm, because leaving Islam means I should be uh, executed, according to uh, Muhammad in uh, reports such as Sahih Bukhari uh, 6922. Uh, Islam is known for suppressing uh, women. In chapter 4, verse 34 of the Quran, it's, it tells us that men are in charge of women, that women are to obey their husbands, and that men have the right to uh, admonish, to separate beds, and finally to hit their wives if they uh, fear arrogance from their wives. Um, it, is, it has been established in Islamic history due to Muhammad's words that virgins can be married off by their parents without their consent, while uh, older women have to be asked for, uh, for their consent. Um, women have no influence in society, which means women cannot even think of whether they can or cannot be happy. Uh, there is always the harm against women who are uh, half of the human population. So uh, that, that much we have about harm and happiness. Uh, Islam is notorious for child marriage. Muhammad himself, according to uh, the vastly agreed reports of Muhammad's life, married a child, uh, his wife Aisha, when she was six and uh, consummated his marriage with her when she was nine. I'm sorry to be very explicit and disgusting about this, but imagine a child that is six years old. Imagine a girl that is nine years old. Muhammad came together and had this marriage and united with a nine-year-old girl in bed when he was in his 50s and had sex with her. And this is by uh, normalized today and defended by the traditional Orthodox Muslim apologists and seen as uh, not harmful, it is seen as a wholesome value, which is good according to them. Um, <laughs> I don't think I need to even even cite any sources for this. If you open any any 
any regular book of our time, the sources are abundant in terms of uh, how child marriage is harmful to the child and to society in general. Islam has slavery, which is not uh, like in like in the Bible. Okay, it, it condones slavery. No, in Islam, slavery is directly universally condoned and commanded. If in the future an Islamic state was established again, slavery would come back. And uh, through fighting the disbelievers, there would be an influx of slavery and sex slavery. And on top of that, again, Islam uh, is a source of ignorance regarding the scientific world, the natural world around us, the physical world. Islam tells us things such as that the sun goes somewhere at night, prays to Allah, asks for permission to rise again and will rise again in the morning, and so on. Insofar, I would say that Islam is harmful intellectually. Islam is harmful to women, to people who think for themselves, to apostates, to disbelievers, and even to Muslims to uh, themselves. And Islam is, by our definitions, and by the definition of the average human uh, human population that is not inflicted by Islam, harmful and extremist. Insofar, I would say, if we had an idea that turned out to be dangerous and harmful to 95%, and we see that the things that I just said are in alignment with Islam, uh, in the Islamic history, to 95% of what Islamic scholars say and how people practice practiced Islam. If we had these statistics about any other ideology, about any other belief, we would say, no doubt, it is harmful, it is bad, it is dangerous. We wouldn't look at the 5% or 1% that have a different interpretation of this idea. We would say it is harmful. Insofar, I can say Islam is harmful. I can say Islam is not only represented by extremists, Islam is extremist. And finally, all I want to say is stay away from Islam. Thank you. You got it. Thank you very much for that opening <clears throat> statement. Apostate Prophet. And want to let you know, folks, if it's your first time here at Modern A Debate, we are a neutral platform hosting debates on science, religion, and politics, and we hope you feel welcome no matter what walk of life you are from. As at Modern Day Debate, we strive to be a neutral channel and want to welcome everybody. With that, we're going to kick it over to The Perfect Dawa. Thanks for being with us. It's a pleasure to have you, and the floor is yours for your opening statement as well. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, <clears throat> James, for uh, giving me this opportunity, <clears throat> and uh, uh, thank you, AP, uh, to have this conversation with me. <clears throat> and I would like to say that uh, uh, there are two different, uh, uh, you know, extremist means that uh, <clears throat> the, the text is there and they go too extreme according to that text, but which is uh, absolutely uh, wrong. I say that there are the wrong interpretation and wrong understanding of Islam by these extremists, or if you call them <clears throat> these backwards, uh, uh, you know, um, Muslims like uh, Hari Raju, and I wish one day I can <clears throat> discuss with him and show how, uh, you know, uneducated he is in Islam. And uh, I would like to say uh, one more thing uh, as well, that we have to try to support uh, for the sake of humanity, yeah, for the sake of uh, uh, you know uh, those people who might be killed by these extremists, uh, uh, you know uh, that we have to support those who uh, uh, talk against such a uh, wrong ideas, wrong beliefs, like killing apostates. Okay, <clears throat> I had a, a discussion with uh, AP uh, a few days ago. And I explained uh, there if um, I don't want to talk about that much now, I just say a little bit. Uh, and those who would like to know what we were talking about, my ideal uh, world, uh, they can watch there or my channel uh, as well. The, the copy is there also, the perfect album. By the way, anybody who would like to talk to me from audience tomorrow, 7 o'clock uh, Central European times, uh, 7 p.m. I would uh, have a live uh, stream and they are welcome. But anyway, uh, Islam came to, um, you know, to establish peace and love and um, get rid of all problems. The source of all problems in Abrahamic religion is Satan. I say very fast, Satan for me is uh, the jungle we are living in where, uh, you know, uh, the rules of this jungle is the strongest one get the most and the weakest one get the least. Uh, and for that, everybody do commit uh, a lot of crimes. Even they use religion to become richer and richer. And uh, a lot of these uh, 
extremist uh, scholars, they just, uh, you know, uh, preach such a extreme ideas or even they just follow them because they are afraid of their, their busyness. And um, they, you said a lot of things, uh, my brother read one about killing apostate. Uh, in Islam, we cannot, uh, uh, in the Islam that I have learned, we cannot kill even a murderer, okay? Because everybody have the right to repent, everybody. And that right in Quran is, uh, you know, the time Quran mentioned that uh, if you repent uh, uh, when you are dying, Allah will not accept it or in the state of Kof. So this disbelief that uh, I talked to you as well, that uh, they translate Kof as disbelief is uh, absolutely wrong <clears throat> because uh, Quran chapter 16 verse 83 says they recognize the favor of Allah they and uh, then they deny it and most of them are kafir so the Quran is talking about these believers but most of them are kafir and there are many chapter uh, 3 verse uh, 57 but as for those who believe and did righteous deeds he will give them uh, in full their rewards and Allah does not like the oppressors. Uh, chapter 4, uh, verse 18. Whoever repentance is not accepted from those... Um, sorry, uh, I forgot. All right, yeah, yeah. Chapter 2, verse 254. Sorry. Oh, you who be have believed, spend from that which we have provided for you before there comes a day in which there is no exchange and no friendship and no uh, intercession. And the kuffar, they are the oppressors. So there are lots of uh, verses in Quran that uh, indicate that the kuffar are uh, oppressors. So kuffar can be uh, Taliban, ISIS, who oppress people. Allah doesn't like oppressors. Allah try to get rid of the oppression. So I have no right because I am myself uh, a former apostate, if you um, call me. At the age of 25, I decided that God doesn't exist. If somebody, um, you know, I even wrote to this um, uh, Dr. Philip, he's a scholar that uh, he, uh, what is the um, sentence for apostasy? He sent me uh, that fabricated hadith that it is uh, death. And I wrote on his page that Thanks God that I wasn't judged by you and your uh, followers and Bukhari followers, so I could leave, survive, and learn, and then convert to Islam. He blocked me instead, say, oh, sorry, uh, we are wrong. You know, these scholars, unfortunately, as I said, they are uh, a bunch of businessmen, and uh, they uh, say even Allah has hands, he has two right hands. Uh, you see how, you know, ignorant they are, and these people are going to, you know, guide, unfortunately, guide, uh, uh, Muslims and many people who don't have time to read to uh, research themselves, uh, they unfortunately just think that these people are, uh, you know, knowledgeable in Islam. <clears throat> but uh, those fighting as well, I have said to you, is always Quran says that as long as they fight, when they stop fighting, you stop fighting too. So we have no right to fight those who don't fight us. Allah says in chapter 60, verse. Uh, 80, uh, 60, I have to bring it, says that Allah does not, chapter 60, verse 8, Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you because of religion and do not expel you from your homes, for, from being uh, righteous towards them and acting justly towards them. Indeed, Allah loves uh, those who act justly. So there are lots of verses I can read, but uh, it takes uh, time that uh, Allah, uh, you know, tells us to be just towards even non-disbelievers. Uh, so the, uh, even in those verses, it's just uh, only during the war time. And, uh, uh, you know, um, you were talking about Sharia law as well before with this uh, Daniel having a Jew, uh, death penalty. As I said, there is de no death penalty in true Islam, even for murderers, because 
many of companion of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him uh, were previous killers. They were killing uh, his companions, but when they uh, uh, you know they converted to Islam, they were forgiven totally. In today's uh, standards and laws, if somebody in the West kills somebody, no matter if you repent, if you convert to anything, you have to spend many years in jail. But in Islam, we have this opportunity and we have no right to take this opportunity from anyone, even a murderer. So because uh, punishment is only uh, on Allah's side, it's, there are lots of verses as well that uh, says to his own prophet that, oh, Muhammad, you just deliver the message, okay? And uh, many of those, of course, uh, hadiths that you, AP, uh, you know, said, unfortunately, they are, um, you know, fabricated because, um, as I said, um, one more thing I would like to say is that um, I wish that one day you uh, say that there is, because imagine that uh, uh, an ISIS, you know, follower uh, keeping a knife on, on your neck, and I'm trying to save you and say that this is not Islam, this is wrong. Uh, would you say that, no, uh, the perfect devil is wrong. The Islam is what ISIS says, so kill me. Definitely you will not say, okay? So if what I'm saying doesn't make sense at all, yeah, okay, I understand you. But what, when it makes sense as well, you should say that there are two different interpretation or understanding of Islam, okay? And this is uh, nice, this is beautiful, because I say that in Islam, we have no right even to punish people because, uh, you know, Allah knows that this jungle, which I explained for you, first of all, uh, uh, some people commit bad deeds because they don't understand it. Allah knows that. Uh, out of ignorance, they do that. Some people, they do it because they are forced, because you know uh, they have to survive. And some people do it because they are guided by this jungle and its rules, uh, fool them and guide them to this, uh, you know, all these bad, bad deeds. So the final message of God, the perfect message of God, the miracle of God is not to come, send a message and punish us for what we do, in a, especially in a brutal, barbaric way. No, the, the perfect uh, message is that to get rid of the source, which is the devil, and one day Quran, Islam, uh, will get rid of the, the devil, which is the source of all bad deeds, which I said as well, that uh, that devil is nothing but this jungle and its rules. And we have to get out of this jungle, live in a human world, love one another, share with each other everything. All right, I, 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 would, uh, I think that uh, so far is enough, yeah. You got it. Thank you very much for that opening as well. And want to let you know, folks, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button as we have many more juicy debates to come. For example, at the bottom right of your screen, we are very excited. Stefan Molyneux and Destiny meet for the first time. That's later this month. With that, thank you very much, Apostate Prophet and the Perfect Dawa. The floor is all yours for open conversation. <coughs> I want to say uh, a, few, a few things, which is, um, first off, I want to say that two things that you said toward the very end are very telling. One of them is uh, that terrible people convert to Islam, people who did terrible things, such as, you know, murder and all the, all the bad stuff. They convert to Islam, and after they convert to Islam, they are forgiven for their past evil. And this, I think, is very telling, because uh, is, Islam, doesn't, Islam just forgives people who did terrible things. But uh, fi funnily enough, you take this from Islam, sources but you don't take into consideration that the same sources also tell us that the Muslims after people converted to Islam judged them for very simple things such as uh, leaving Islam or even even for adultery let's say and killed them and adultery is nowhere near as murder uh, the, the, the other thing that is very telling is uh, that you said if I if an ISIS guy held a knife to my uh, to my neck and you came to save me, then I would say, uh, no, your interpretation of Islam is the true Islam, just so I could survive. That means I would lie. I would lie in that moment to save my own life. I would lie and say, no, your interpretation is right. This guy's interpretation is wrong. That would be a lie. And honestly, I would like to be a hero right now and say, I wouldn't do that. I would I would still say the ISIS guy has the right, the more correct interpretation of Islam. But 
as I said, it would be a lie if I said your interpretation is right. I want to be very blunt, I'm sorry to say this, but I think your Islam is based on complete nonsense. No offense to you personally. It is complete nonsense, it is completely baseless. It is not based on any proper uh, scripture, not based on any uh, understanding of Islam that has been adopted by 99% of Muslims in Islamic history. It is merely based on uh, what you wish for the world. And it, it is an appeal to emotions. It is unfounded on proper sources. Not sure if you want to uh, comment on that, but... Yes. Sure, uh, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I would like to uh, comment. Uh, you said that... Uh, I, I forgot. <laughs> uh, because I was going to find uh, some verses uh, of Quran, because you said that... Ah, yeah, yeah, you said that uh, <clears throat> the same uh, source said this, okay, uh, these things. Uh, but you have to know that Quran says in chapter 4, verse eight, uh, 80 to 83, it says that if, uh, you know, about hadith, that says that there were Hippocrates, who were coming out of uh, Prophet Muhammad's lecture, and they were saying things about Prophet Muhammad that they were not true. And to find out, uh, what is it, uh, to find out if it is uh, from your Lord, you have to match them with Quran. So anything that goes uh, against Quran from these. Quran doesn't say that anywhere. There is no such okay. Quran verse. No, uh, ch uh, chapter four, verse eighty to eighty-three. I can uh, bring it up for you if you want. Okay, uh, if you just a moment. <clears throat> it would be nice if you quoted these things while you uh, talk about them. But the Quran doesn't ever ever talk about hadith. Okay. The Quran wouldn't okay. address no, no, hadith, it's and, it's and, it's and, the, and the Quran never says that people. Uh, make up lies, uh, okay. and that when you later read the reports about Muhammad, you should, uh, you know, compare okay. them to the Quran. This Let is me... not a thing that exists in Islam. Right. I mean, what you are doing is basically you are looking at certain Islamic sources about, uh, you are looking at reports about Muhammad, and then you are judging based on your own whims, based on your understanding. You are uh, going against the uh, consensus and the scholarship, the 1,400 year old scholarship of Islam, uh, which took many of these things into consideration. You say, no, they are all wrong. I am actually right about uh, what Islam really says because this doesn't make sense to me. This does make sense to me. This looks p compassionate. This doesn't look compassionate. Well, the good news is Islam is not meant to be compassionate. Islam is violent. Islam is intolerant. Islam is horrible. Islam oh. is the religion which uh, in its scripture clearly says that those who disbelieve are the worst of creatures. They are less than cattle. They are horrible disbelievers. You should well, fire. Okay, okay. okay. I do okay. want to go ahead. I know that you had that verse. This is nonsense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you uh, use all the time and go to the interpretation and, uh, you know, uh, translation or interpretation of those extremists. I read for you the uh, verse of Quran that says that most of them are kofar. Most disbelievers are kofar. And I, I read for you yeah. that, uh, 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 what is it? Uh, I read for you that kofar are oppressors. So it is not, uh, Quran doesn't say uh, the, what is it? The disbelievers are worse creature. It okay, read, read to okay. me 572. Quran chapter 5, verse 72. Read it to me. Or I can, can read it to you. Read, read, yes, read yep. it to me. It says, surely the disbelievers, Kafiru, are those who say Allah is the Messiah, the son of Mary. Okay. While oh. the Messiah said, O children of Israel, did I ask you to worship me? And so on. And uh, their shelter will be hellfire and no supporter will be there for them. What, it, what does it say? It's who, who are the disbelievers according to this verse? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, because, uh, you know, the, the kufr is covering the truth, okay? But uh, Allah doesn't uh, punish uh, you for minor sins, okay? Okay, can for you answer the question, who are the, who are the disbelievers according to this verse? The, can you please read it again? The disbelievers are those who say Allah is the Messiah, the son of Mary. The kufar, okay? Yeah, who are the, who are the disbelievers no, according to this I have to uh, read it uh, again, okay? I have to read it myself. Then open it right now and read it because this, this verse destroys everything that you are saying. Quran chapter chapter nine chapter sorry Quran chapter five verse seventy two it says indeed those who say Allah is uh, the Messiah the son of Mary are kafiru disbelievers the same word kufr disbelief they are the disbelievers according to this verse who are well, disbelievers seventy two yeah just about yes seventy two. Okay, but 
Uh, yes, I understand. But I say that Allah doesn't say that uh, he's going to, uh, or we have to punish uh, people for, you know, believing uh, in uh, that Mary, um, Mariam is a son of, uh, uh, what is it, son of God. And there are many verses in Quran that says that uh, <clears throat> Christians are not all the same, okay? Some of them uh, uh, stand firm in, okay, say, oh, people of the book, uh, this is chapter 5, verse 68. You have no ground to stand upon unless you firmly stand uh, by the Torah and gospel and all the revelation and uh, uh, just a second. Uh, okay, I, I, I miss where you answered the question. Uh, according to chapter 5, verse 72, who are the disbelievers? Uh, I said that. Uh, how about this one, uh, chapter, what do you think yourself? Okay, chapter 9, verse, uh, chapter 16, verse 83. Okay, can, but can you please answer my question before we go further? According to chapter 5, verse 72, who are the disbelievers? So, uh, <clears throat> the the kuf, as I said, is also covering the, the truth, okay? <laughs> okay. So, wh why don't, you, kufr, uh, yes. why no, don't you answer say, the question, who are the disbelievers? Kufr, it's, yeah, it's a kuf against Allah, but we have no right to punish them, and Allah will judge them. So okay, your okay, but can, you, can, you, can you just answer the question? It's very simple. According okay. to chapter 5, verse 72, who are the disbelievers? Uh, those who say that, uh, according that uh, verse, those who say that Allah, uh, sorry, uh, Jesus is son of God, yeah? Thank you. Do you think okay. the Quran is lying to us according to, uh, about who the, 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 kufr, the, the kufar are, who the disbelievers are? Do you think it's a lie what the Quran says here? No, it's not a lie. It's a, the way that Allah was, uh, you know, revealing his message to the people, okay? And, okay. The, uh, and Quran is not one verse, okay? Quran is a lot of verses. Other side, Allah says that uh, uh, those uh, say, oh, people of the book, do not go uh, to extreme to your. Uh, but just a moment. I, 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 there are many. You, verses. You're, you're telling us the Quran says uh, those who say uh, Allah is the, the Messiah, the Son of Mary, are disbelievers. The Quran says that, but we should just ignore that. We should just look at a different part where it says the, the disbelievers are those who uh, oppress people. And and then we should therefore conclude that only the oppressors are disbelievers, not those who have different beliefs. No, uh, I say that this is the way he was talking to people, okay, that this is wrong, okay? So I'm sorry, that, that is complete okay. nonsense. Yeah, all right. Chapter 3, verse 113. Not all of them are, are alike of the people of the book are a portion that stand for the right they uh, rehearse the verse of uh, god all night long and they prostrate themselves in uh, adoration so quran uh, clearly in many places distinguish between you know christians those who are doing good and not only that as i said this is uh, what I have learned from uh, Quran that you can be even a disbelievers, absolutely, uh, you know, uh, don't believe in God. But when, uh, you know, do good deeds, um, you enter paradise. There was even a discussion about, uh, there was, a, I think, a scholar was talking about uh, this um, Mahatma Gandhi. And I mentioned myself to you. That, which, which scholar? Uh, I, I don't remember, but anyway, there are scholars. One of them is his name was, uh, you know, uh, he he was killed many years ago. His name was uh, Dr. Shalyati. Okay, he's uh, Iranian. He was an Iranian, uh, uh, you know, scholar. That he was saying that uh, a heretic, according to the yes, Islamic he, consensus. He was saying that he was saying as well uh, that Mahatma Gandhi was a much better human being in front of Allah than a lot of scholars who, uh, you know whose um, teachings goes against Quran and Quran's teachings. So uh, Mahatma Gandhi, who saved, uh, this is, I, I tell you that I can read a lot of verses of Quran. I have them, but I don't know if we get the time for that, okay? But, here, here's, the, here's the problem. You are giving me an example of somebody who is considered a heretic by uh, the Islamic community, by the Muslim community, by by 95% of, uh, of Muslims in history. I, I don't really care, to be very honest, to be very blunt. I don't care what uh, some uh, shariati says who is against, the, uh, who is a counter-revolutionary in Iran, uh, which okay. is a pol political matter. Uh, uh, you, we, we have clearly acknowledged just now that the Quran describes as disbelievers those, those who say Allah is the Messiah, so the Messiah is God. 
it, we can look at Quran chapter 2 verse uh, 6 where it says surely those who disbelieve no matter if you warn them or not they will not believe this is clearly in context to, of those who uh, believe in the Quran or don't believe in the Quran you are acknowledging that the Quran describes those who have different beliefs as disbelievers but you want to ignore this uh, and say well in a different part it says oppressors are disbelievers therefore we should just look at that all right okay now so, let me see. Are, you, are you saying the Quran contradicts itself and only one of these things is true no it uh, it is the the matter of understanding okay interpretation chapter 98 verse okay you are just one person who interprets the Quran as he no, wishes no, no, we, we have we have Islamic history of people interpreting these things and understanding them forever and people oh. have out of good reasons look look if I tell you if I tell you disbelievers are those who steal my shoes and then I also tell you disbelievers are those who disagree with my views then you cannot come and say uh, okay those who, who disagree are not disbelievers only those who, who steal his shoes are disbelievers no you would take this into consideration and say okay well according to his very clear words both those who steal his shoes and those who disagree with him are disbelievers and that's what the Quran does the Quran says those who disbelieve those who have different beliefs are disbelievers kufr that's very much acknowledged even according to uh non-islamic and islamic scholars and those who oppress people oppress meaning simply to uh you know repel islam are disbelievers and according to the quran disbelievers are the worst of creatures less than cattle and they should be fought this is very clear okay uh as I said, chapter 91, verse 1, those who committed kufr among the people of the scripture and the polistes did not give up the kufr until there came to them clear evidence. So those among, okay, uh, people of the book, so either people of the book, they are all disbelievers, okay? I never they, said that. Uh, no, the, because you said that because all of them, they say that uh, uh, Jesus was son of God, okay? They are either, all of them are kuffar, okay? Mm -hmm. Or um, none of them is. When it says that among them means that there are among them who are not kuffar. Yeah, so, because that's what the Muslims thought. And, that, and that's what the Islamic uh, tradition tells us uh, within the centuries of Islam's emergence. Because people thought not all Christians agree that Jesus is the son of God or that Jesus is God. Some don't agree. Uh, and, and it was Islam's approach that those who are Christians without this belief or those right. who are Christians before Muhammad arrives are good. Whereas those who are still Christians and who still believe in the divinity uh, of Jesus and that he's the son of God are disbelievers after the arrival of Islam. This is a very clear thing that has been solved uh, in the within the time frame of the emergence of the of, of Islam. This is not something new. Brother, it's not a contradiction. Yes, my brother. <laughs> Quran chapter three verse seven clearly sure. says that it is he who sent has sent down to you, O Muhammad, the book. In it are verses that are precise. They are the foundation of the book. And others are unspecific. As for those uh, in whose heart is a deviation from truth, they will follow that of it, which is unspecific. Okay, seeking. Uh, just let me finish it, please. Sure. Seeking uh, discord and seeking an interpretation suitable to them. To them. Okay, and no one knows its true interpretation except Allah and those firm in knowledge. But uh, people with uh, deviation in heart say, we believe in it uh, all uh, of it is from our Lord. And no one will uh, be reminded except those. So uh, Allah, only Allah knows these unspecific verses of Quran and those firm in knowledge, okay? So how those firm uh, in knowledge understand the true meaning of uh, a verse is And you have the true meaning. Uh, no. Let, just a minute, minute, please. They put these verses, okay, how do you know? How do you know that the true meaning of this verse, if you are firm in knowledge, you have to put them beside other verses of Quran, okay? Okay. So, so chapter 3, uh, sorry, 5 verse 38, what it says, uh, Red One. Which one? Chapter 5 verse 38. Chapter 5 verse 38. Let's see, what does it say? Chapter 5 verse 38. Yeah. 
chapter 5, verse 38, of, as for a woman and a, as for a man and a woman who commits theft, cut off the hands of both to punish them for what they earned. Is, is this what you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. A deterrent so punishment think? from Allah. Yeah. So you think that uh, Allah says to chop their hands, yeah? Yes. Yes. Very clearly. Yeah. Okay. Very clear. But uh, this is the problem that, uh, you know, as I said, those uh, 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 scholars like yeah. those, uh, you know, I don't know even he is a scholar or not. These ignorant scholars who think that Allah has two hands, okay, because Allah in another chapter says that uh, Allah, uh, the Jews try to tie Allah's hands, their own hands is tied, okay. So they think that hands is physical in this chapter. 120 times hand has been used in Quran in different meanings. So uh, let me bring for you. Uh, so you're telling us that when the Quran says, as for the thieves, uh, cut off their hands, it doesn't actually tell us to cut off the hands of the thieves. It is actually uh, a me metaphorical. You, this, this, yes, <laughs> it, you should understand, okay? Hand has been used in Quran in 120 times. Okay, uh, what does it mean? Uh, just what does it mean instead? What it does says, the Quran chapter 5 okay. verse 38 mean, mean instead? It means that because I, I said this to Farid, okay? Farid, I could talk to him just a few minutes because next verse explains it very well, says that, and if they repent, Allah forgives them, okay? So I said that, how can it be possible that you punish somebody and then that person, you know, chop their hands and then that person, you have already, it's like that uh, I passed a red light, the officer catch me, and then he take my driving license and he write me a thousand dollars ticket. And I say, oh, officer, please forgive me. I repent. And then officer say, okay, go and get your, I will, I forgive you, but you have to go and get new driving that, license and you have to pay that thousand dollars ticket. You know, it doesn't make sense. Okay. That, that, that's, that's not a logical, con that's not a logical contradiction. Yeah, I can uh, have somebody come to me. That person may, uh, you know, punch me and hurt me and shoot me. And I can go and uh, press charge for that and uh, have the justice done and after we are through it I can say hey you know what what is past is past I forgive you and I, ho I hope for a better future right. there is no contradiction in that in this right. one that the Quran says cut off their hands and after that if they repent why? Allah forgives them all right. there is no why? contradiction here at all why, yeah why you say that it says cut off their hands do you read Arabic I, I understand. I understand what is being said. We don't have to Wait, read what Arabic to no, understand what is being said. Oh, yeah, I understand. No, what is being uh, said? Can you tell me? It says the katol yat. Yeah. Can you read that uh, exact that uh, those words? That on, on, oh, no, now we want to get to uh, read Arabic. Is, is that what? No, we're no, doing? no, no, no. We have no, to read I'm Arabic not. to understand what the Quran says. No, 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 no. I'm not going to tell you the exact word that it says. Uh, uh, you know, separate. Says, That's what it says. No, no. It says that Sarah fakat au Yeah. Yeah. Now, chapter 12, verse 31. Can you read that one, please? And see how they translate that. Chapter 5, verse 12. 31. No, Cuts. chapter uh, 12, verse 31. Okay. Can you read that one? What it, the, how they have translated. So when she heard of their scheming, she sent for them and prepared for them a banquet and gave each one of them a knife and said, come out before them. And when they saw him, they greatly admired him and cut their hands and said, perfect is Allah. This is not a man. It's, it's, no, it's none but a noble angel. So what's the problem here? So the problem is that here also used exact word, atuliyad, okay? It's exactly like the one which I, uh, the crucifixion that I brought you another part. That yeah, Allah and according, according to the scholarly you, interpretation, and, these people out of excitement actually literally cut their own hands. There is oh, no problem. Cut, no, oh yeah, yeah, just a second. Here is just, they cut their one hand. It, is, it doesn't make sense that you're peeling a fruit and you chop both your hands. It doesn't make sense, okay? So what here they say, they cut their hands. And then it doesn't make sense that after they cut their hands, they didn't scream. They were so, uh, you know, passionate. They were so uh, romantic. There were no words about uh, AP. Please. No. What is the problem? I don't understand the problem here. Why, why are we talking about both yes, hands? No, they cut no, their no. hands out of excitement. Yes. What is so, the problem here? No, they didn't cut. They just stopped. They just stop peeling, okay? It is stop and action, okay? okay? They stop peeling and said, oh, price be to Lord. Wow, such a, you know, handsome guy. 
So okay, that sounds that sounds great. But what what does what does what does chapter five verse thirty eight uh, tell us when it says when it tells us to cut the yeah. hands of the female? No, of the it doesn't say thieves. cut. It says stop their action, stop their <laughs> way of stealing, and if they repent, Allah forgives them. Okay. And next one says that did you know? Didn't you know? Allah I'm, I'm sorry, that is complete nonsense. I mean, the the okay. the, the, the verse says cut off, as in separate. We have I the same word. You. We have the same word used through the Quran. It does, the, the, the same okay. word actually doesn't appear in, in that other Ash. verse that you what that is quoted. Uh, is separate, cut. It appears only, in many parts only. of the Quran. I, I don't want to go into what the origins of cut are. Okay, uh, it, it says cut off the hands, and we have hands, which literally refer to hands. I don't know why you came up with the interpretation of uh, talking okay. about both hands oh. or just one hand. Okay. It All says right. cut off their hands. It okay. tells us that when thieves come, we should cut off their hands. According to this, the Islamic law and the Islamic rule. Does it and say these, for how much? Does it say for how many? How much? I, I don't care uh, how. I that's completely irrelevant. I don't care. I don't care how much. According to the Islamic law and the Islamic hadith and Islamic understanding, this was applied because of the Quran and the hands of thieves were cut off in many reports okay, yes. and in many classical books of Islamic law. Now you are coming with an understanding and saying, well, this is actually metaphorical. I'm sorry, you're using a Quran verse which says some verses are ambiguous, some verses are clear. And you're saying your understanding is of course clear and the understanding of 99% of Muslims is actually wrong. How who decides that? Okay. That's very convenient. I could All say right. that according to that verse, you are reading the wrong interpretation. I am reading the right interpretation. And I'm sorry to say this, but 99% of Muslims and scholars happen to agree with me, not with you, because because they are they are looking at the facts and they are not leaving it up to you who tries to make this extreme religion non-extreme with his uh, 21st century anti-Iranian interpretations of the Quran. Okay. Uh, um you know that uh, the, unfortunately, many of those people, okay, they don't, uh, you know, they, they don't themselves research and ponder on such things. And the chapter five- You are telling me that Islamic scholars of the 1,400 years have not researched this matter. No, I say that these, the people, okay, who follow them, okay, they just follow uh, blindly because they think like, uh, uh, what is it? The Hari Sultan said that he had a friend Okay, and uh, before he was saying that there is no wife beating, there is no this and that. When he heard Hagigaju, then he changed his mind because this person he really didn't know Islam, and he was waiting for Hagigaju to you know teach him. So uh, uh, what I'm saying is that I'm pretty sure he was being sarcastic. Okay, okay. Uh, you were Muslim before, okay, yourself, yeah. okay, yeah. Yeah, or you believe at least. Do you think really when Allah says that uh, they try to? Uh, tie Allah's hands. Allah has hands. Do you think at all? I don't believe is... Allah. I don't believe Allah exists. No, no. If uh, if, if if you were a Muslim, no, my, uh, no. If you were a Muslim, okay. Do you think it makes sense when Allah sa says that nothing is like Allah? Then these people, these scholars, say that yeah, Allah has hands. He has two right hands. Okay. Uh, this is what Quran said. They don't think that, that is that, that is a completely different theological matter. And you are you are now appealing to a theological discussion where mm -hmm. the Muslim scholars have actually been divided for a long time on yes. whether they should take this literally, on whether they should look at the apparent meaning, or whether this should be entirely metaphorical. This is completely uh, unrelated to the matter. This is a theological discussion where even the traditionalists, who vastly agreed upon cutting the hands of thieves, by the way, disagreed upon. Okay. Because it's a theological I, matter. This yes, is completely I, different. Yes, yes, I said, I read for you 3, 7, okay? Allah says, don't follow if you don't understand it, okay? Don't go for the, the verse that you don't understand the true meaning, because, because Allah cannot put... Uh, okay, you know, all the bad things in the Quran are apparently misinterpretations, and we are just supposed to look at the true meaning, which is not what the Quran actually says, but what we somehow want to understand because we love Islam. I'm sorry, but that's a very uh, care bear world understanding of, so <laughs> of, it, of what so Islam mean, is. Okay, uh, but if you have to follow uh, Islam, then you have to take Quran first, okay? And those uh, uh, report that you said, okay, you report you said, uh, they say also that uh, Prophet Muhammad stoned people to death, which is absolutely trash, okay? Because <clears throat> nowhere in Quran says that those people who uh, inserted this barbaric act in Bible and Torah, okay, the, the stoning of adulterers, they tried to do it uh, with Quran. And because they couldn't do that, so they came and lied 
uh, about Quran that this verse was eaten by goat. And, you know, this doesn't make sense for somebody who has brain and think, okay? And I'll... Uh, and, I, I, I would like to... Any, 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 anybody anybody can say that. I'm sorry. L look, I really understand where you're coming from. And I really understand your passion for a compassionate, good version of Islam. And I really wish, I'm, I'm serious, I really wish that in 1,400 years of Islamic studies and Islamic scholarship and Islamic history, the vast majority of Muslims and Muslim scholars had uh, employed the way of thinking that you have about Islam. The, the problem is they did not do do this even if even if we even if we did grant that the vast majority of muslims took these things uh, wrongly they misunderstood everything and your interpretation is somehow right i'm, not I'm sorry only the one. i'm sorry I'm to sell right? yeah of course, there, there, there are two other people okay but no, the issue is the, two other people. I told the, you, the, the, the issue is the issue is an organization that okay they uh, they are, they are it is in terrorist the activities. We know that. Okay. Here is a, here is the but issue. What you uh, said, Redwan, what you said? You said okay. terrorist, terrorist? Whatever it is that, that engage in organizations in political militant activism against Iran, I don't really care about that. Not against Iran. They are Iranian against Iranian fascist terrorist regime. Okay, Iranian Iran, Iran's regime. government. Whatever. It's completely besides the point. Okay. The issue is the issue is even if you were right, even if ninety five percent of Muslims had okay. understood everything the completely wrong way, which is absurd to me, to be very honest, okay. I'm sorry to say it doesn't matter. We would still have to say Islam is harmful. Islam is extremist. Okay. Obviously, if ninety five percent of Muslims misunderstand the the Islamic religion and turn it into something abhorrent, and you agree that it is abhorrent, then we have to say it is harmful. I'm sorry, but I can't no, take Islam into consideration is the five percent. No, no. Yeah, Islam your Islam, is your Islam is not. And I think exactly. The, the Islam exactly, is your Islam, Islam, Islam is not. I'm, no, I'm sorry, exactly. but is, Islam, Islam is not Islam your. Is, yeah, Islam, Islam is not yeah. your Islam. Okay, Islam I'm, is what we have. I'm fighting them, but Radwan, I said. Good luck. Good luck. Yes, I'm fighting them. My organization. <laughs> we are fighting them. Forty-two years. We have lost hundreds of thousands of people, okay? So we are fighting this uh, Taliban, uh, ISIS, Iranian fascist regime. And then this cut, okay, which is cut, also is used in Quran 34 uh, times. Chapter 2, one, 166, uh, cut, which is cut, means cutting a relation, okay? You cannot, and then stealing, Sarah, Radwan, is also used in different way in Quran. Uh, stealing information is also mentioned in Quran that it is sirgat, okay, is uh, stealing. So you have to cut their ear. No, this is uh, this is goes against the um, you know the, the precise verses of Quran that uh, it is not justice. As I said, that um, Allah says that I forgive them if they repent. Even if you are a disbeliever, okay, and you repent what? You repent to Allah means that you are going to be Muslim. If you don't have hands, how you are going to make the ablation, how you are going to, you know, pray all these things. So Allah, how you are going to bathroom? Uh, I'm sorry that I say that. Allah would never allow you, okay, never allow me or a, a backward like uh, uneducated or a uh, caveman from uh, Afghanistan, you know, this Taliban or this, uh, uh, what is it, Hadigaju, to, uh, you know, to chop your hands uh, because when you, uh, because as I said, even if there is a punishment, it should be reversible, okay, because you have the right to repent and you cannot repent if you have already been punished for what you have done. And they cannot say that. Muji, uh, if, if I kill a man, uh, okay. And I, I and I go before the court, and the court judges uh, that I have wrongfully killed a man, and okay. I I now have to serve a prison sentence, and I also have to pay fines and 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 this and that. But then I go to the family of the person that I killed and say, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me for what I have done, and I acknowledge my fault and my mm -hmm. punishment. And they say, We forgive you. Does that mean, oh, you forgive me? Oh, great. Okay, then I don't have to go to prison and I can take all the money back that I have to pay. That I have to pay. Yeah. Do you think that's how it works? That's not how it works. If they okay. say, I forgive you, what they, what they mean is just, okay, you are forgiven for your past, uh, uh, you know, uh, crime for which you have to pay because that's how things will get into order. Uh, you are forgiven for that. Unfortunately, so you, you still have to serve your right. sentence. So, so, yeah, so, so you are for punishment, okay? 
but I'm not for punishment. I say that uh, because people do bad deeds, um, you know, uh, by mistake or um, they are forced to. So we have to get rid of the source and people, uh, because many times we can be wrong. We can, we execute people who are not, even a few months ago, I saw two Americans who were released after 47 years, I think, two black Americans who spent 47 years in jail despite they were innocent. So uh, Allah does not, uh, will not put this task on us to punish people wrongly. That's very cute. And then, yeah, the wrongly. That's... So what we have to do is to first to get rid of the source of the all bad deeds. I will read for you from. Okay, that, uh, that, that's very cute. But I'm I'm sorry. Um, I wish I just I just have to. Uh, I just think that we will be stuck with this point forever because I don't think I, I, I don't think anybody wants to uh, agree here that that is actually the interpretation of how things are if you want to believe that uh, this cannot be true because Allah is merciful and Allah is beautiful and cute and all that that's very nice but I'm sorry Allah doesn't exist and we have to judge the, right, okay. the Islamic scripture as it uh, as it is not as you want to believe it is okay Let, just uh, one more thing I have to say that because I learn Islam from you know, this is exactly uh, matches Quran. Ali Radiallah uh, writes to his uh, uh, governor of Egypt, people do bad deeds because of different reasons, intentionally or by mistake, but you forgive them as you expect that your God forgives your bad deeds. You are stronger than the people, uh, but remember that uh, the one who put you there is stronger than you. God is stronger than the one who put you. The, the worst people for you must be those who try to reveal people's mistakes and sins because people make mistakes and sins and the governor is the one who must cover them. Do not try to find out people's mistake because uh, your duty is to fix the problems. Okay. That lead, just a moment, let, please. Leads the, it's a very uh, long quote. I can't read a whole book. No, finish, finish, finish. People to bad deeds. And it is God's right to judge people, not yours. This is exactly what I have learned from Quran as well. It says to his own prophet, cover people's mistakes and sins uh, as much as you can so that God covers yours. So I am not coming up with these things, my brother. These are things that uh, has been in, Quran, uh, in Islam, but not that ISIS Islam. Okay, okay if, if I now tell you that Ali burnt also burnt people, you will tell me, oh, that's that's fake. That never happened. Although we have okay. clear clear evidence for the for, that, for the so I clear, that. Oh, Yes, you have clear <laughs> evidence. Yes. So uh, as uh, now I will tell you that. Yes. Now oh, I, I, no, I, I want to ask you a question about what you just said. Uh, you you <laughs> say Allah is uh, forgi Allah forgives you and He you know uh, forgives you for your sins and all that. We should also be like Allah. Uh, if the Quran when the Quran tells us that. Uh, if we say uh, that the Messiah is Allah, or you know, if we if we hold different beliefs, then our eternal abode will be hellfire. Does that mean Allah forgives us for our sins? Allah says that uh, if I, uh, Allah says also, if I forgive a portion of them kufar, okay, I will not uh, forgive another per, uh, you know portion of them. Okay, because, okay, because it does, they it doesn't, are it, oppressors. Okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Those who are not forgiven. Allah does not forgive them, right? Those who are uh, so, because I was looking for something. You were talking about uh, uh, kuffar or what, uh, or disbelief. It, it, it doesn't matter. There, there, there are certain. There's a certain uh, group of people. Let's say, or there, there, there is a part of the population that Allah will not forgive. And according to the Quran, it explicitly says their eternal abode will be hell, and yes. there will be no help for them. So Allah uh, ends up not forgiving people, right? Uh, people. Yes, of course. Some people. Okay, so so they will people. they will have eternal punishment. So, so but, uh, but you uh, want to eternal, tell me that... uh, okay, eternal. We are not uh, God to know how much this uh, that eternal. But people like Adolf Hitler, yeah. Khomeini, these people. Well, I'm, I'm pretty they, sure the Quran says were, that those who say, for example, uh, Allah is the third of three, or Allah is the son of the is the son of Mary, uh, they will go to hell and they will stay there forever. I mean, it's it's very clear okay. that these people yes. who disbelieve will go and burn forever in hell for yeah. simply having different beliefs. Or if let, let's say if it's uh, about oppressors, let's say those people were oppressors, which is why they will go to hell and stay there forever. But obviously, the Quran tells us that Allah will uh, judge people 
people and will be unforgiving about uh, their certain sins. People. Yeah, yeah, certain yeah. people. Yeah. So, so, so Allah is not. Is, Allah does not do what you just uh, told us. Allah would do. Allah will judge many people and yes, will Allah. Allah unforgivingly will punish people. them forever. Okay. Allah will judge so, so, so why? So why are you then saying uh, even Allah forgives us for our sins and for our for our deeds, which is which is why we should forgive people. We should we should cover people's uh, sins. We should forgive uh, cover people's faults, and we should be all forgiving, basically, and leave the judgment to Allah. I mean, yeah. we, because, we clearly yeah, see yeah. we can't make this comparison because yeah. even Allah Himself is unforgiving. Yes, because uh, as I said, He's the best judge, okay, and He knows whom to forgive and whom He uh, to punish. Okay, we might um, punish people who have done something. You know, maybe you killed somebody, okay, but at that moment. We don't know what was going on in your head. You were totally crazy. But after you kill that person, later you change. You say, oh, my God, why? I?" Or you were 20 years old or 22 years old. Later, when you grow up, then you realize that you were wrong. You, like I said that I was 25. I became atheist. I could do many things, you know. But later, I realized I was wrong and I changed. OK, so we, we are not the right judge to judge people. What I'm saying is that uh, Islam came to get rid of the source so that people don't do bad deeds. OK, if I was, I say that we have to. I say that we have to create the same uh, possibility that I have had for the, the, the person who is in Colombia is born in a, a drug uh, dealer family and he has tattoo everywhere and he has gone and go around and kill people. If I was also born that, there, I would be the same, okay? So let's, uh, I say, let's, uh, uh, you know, provide the same opportunity to everybody instead of punishing people. This is what I have learned from Quran, and I can read for you many verses. Uh, you, yeah, I mean, you told us that this is the Quran that you, or this is the Islam that you learned. You yes. said this is the Islam that I learned. It doesn't punish people. It doesn't kill apostates and this and that. I'm sorry, you learned a version of Islam. I don't think it really matters what kind of Islam you learned and who you learned it from. You probably learned it from certain people who think like you, and that is very uh, yes. convenient. But that's not really... Islam the, or the Islam that we as an international community take into consideration. The Islam that you want to see, yes. That's not no, 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 <laughs> no. I would love to see a peaceful Islam. The issue is that Islam is not the Islam that we are confronted with. <laughs> Islam we are, that we are confronted with we are this. Going to make it, yeah. We are trying to. Uh, you know, I I it. highly doubt it, but good yeah. luck with that. Uh, yeah. You are saying that uh, extremists like Daniel Hikikichu and people who agree with him and Farid and all the others, and these are the loud and the the vast majority of Muslims. You say they are extremists, and you are uh, you are the real Muslim. You are the real Islam. I'm sorry to to say that it's also baseless, oh, I, based on I, your own wishes, and it's I, it's nonsense. I, I, I say that I say that they they. Uh, misinterpreted Quran, misunderstand And, and you Quran, interpret it okay? correctly. I'm sorry, that's nonsense. Yes. You no, say no. You, you still haven't shown us uh, and you won't be able to show us uh, the contradiction in the Quran between those who have different beliefs, they are disbelievers. You say those who oppress people are instead disbelievers, but you have not been able not to present disbelievers. Those present who that. oppress people are kafar, okay? Those who oppress Kuf that, 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 kufar, that, kufar in the Quran is the translation for disbelievers. Kufar I in the Quran. That. Okay, Kufar in the Quran, in chapter 5, verse uh, 72, uh, as I uh, mentioned earlier, is explicitly used for those who believe that Jesus is God. And the Quran says they are Kufar, those who uh, say Jesus is God. The Quran further says in two other verses that those who are Kufar are the worst of creatures. It says those who are Kufar are cattle indeed they are less than cattle so uh, when i say worst of creatures we should take this into consideration what this actually means the quran tells us the quran tells you and me and all others out there who are disbelievers who are kafir who don't believe in what islam believes in that we are not the worst of humans that we are not just worse than muslims it tells us we are worse than any creation that allah has accomplished according to the islamic idea we are worse than dogs worse than cats worse than worms, worse than maggots, worse than cockroaches. We are the worst of creation, according to the Quran. The Unfortunately, Muj, Muj, Muji wants to tell us, oh, that's just a misunderstanding. It's different. But I'm sorry, that is completely based. Which, where is it? it says in chapter 98, verse 6, it says, indeed, they who committed kufr among the people of the scripture and the polistis will be in the fire of hell. 
abiding entirely therein. Those are the worst creature. So again, it says those who committed kuf, a mound, not all. Okay. So you uh, again, it's misinterpretation of the word kuf. Okay. So it's a mound, not all, not. Uh, and that again is because because the Quran uh, depicts those disbelievers or those uh, people of the scripture who came before Muhammad as righteous uh, or who believed in one God as righteous, whereas those who came after Muhammad and rejected Muhammad as disbelievers, as kufr, as kafir. And those uh, kafirs, those Christians that we have today, 99% of Christians that we have today are kafir according to the Quran because they disbelieve, because they believe that Jesus is the son of God and God. And they are kafir, they are the worst of creatures, they are less than cockroaches and they should be fought. That's what it says. The Jews that we have today are cockroaches, less than cockroaches. The atheists and apostates that we have today and polytheists that we have today, according to the Quran, are less than cockroaches. That's what the Quran is. That's what the Quran says. That's what the majority of Muslims agree upon. <clears throat> and nowhere in Quran says that go fight those who don't uh, don't fight you. It says oh, great. fight Fine. those who fight you. Okay. And then uh, again, chapter three, verse seven says that you go after those unspecific verses and take uh, your own interpretation uh, uh, and, uh, you know, the interpretation which suits your agenda and want to say that, yeah, it is uh, like this. But <clears throat> unfortunately, uh, uh, or fortunately, uh, I have learned a different Islam. And, uh, I have a lot of verses of Quran I could read for you uh, that, uh, uh, for example, you said Ali burned people. Uh, I told you that if uh, a psychologist see these two different statements would say that, no, these are not the same people. Okay, somebody who say, who is so mercy, go and burn people just because they disbelieve, okay? <clears throat> so uh, this is, these are his own words. And Quran says, Quran says that if you uh, punish people, punish them uh, with the equal, um, you know, punishment that you have been harmed. So. Just uh, if if you are disbelieved, I go and burn you. How do you harm me? Did you burn me? No, these are things that goes. Uh, I have a lot of verses, of course, I can read for you. And <clears throat> the, the, the Quran doesn't say that you should fi fight only those who fought you. That's that's uh, the Quran says that you should be just toward those who did not drive you out and warn you. But again, we talked about this before. Justice so, is a subjective. It has yeah. to be defined in Quran chapter nine, verse uh, 28. It says uh, that you should uh, keep away the polytheists from your holy places because they are filthy. Then upon that afterward, it explicitly says in Quran chapter nine, verse 29, fight those who don't believe in Allah in the last stage who don't adopt the true religion from you know those who have believed fight until they are subjugated further it in the next verse it clarifies that the Christians say Jesus is the son of God and the Jews say Ezra is the son of God which is complete nonsense and may Allah destroy them in this context fight those who disbelieve and Islamic okay. scholars have agreed that this is a general verse okay. uh, of fighting against the disbelievers yeah, Quran, uh, chapter 16, verse 125 to uh, 28, 128. Invite to the way of your Lord with wisdom and good instruction and uh, argue with them in a way that is best. Indeed, so I have to invite you in this way, not I have to fight you and kill you, okay? So this, uh, indeed, your Lord is most knowing of who has strayed from his way and uh, he is... Uh, most knowing of uh, uh, who is uh, guided, okay? <clears throat> 2396, O oh, Muhammad, repel evil in the best manner. We are well aware of the, that they uh, say about you. Quran 41, uh, chapter 34. Uh, good and evil cannot be equal. Respond yeah. to evil with the, uh, what is best. Then the one you are in uh, a fraud will uh, with uh, with will be like a close friend, and I have a, a, a friend or brother from South Africa who thought that is, uh, Islam is devil. He's all every his name is Martin. He's always on my channel. We talk. We are like brothers now. Okay, so this is what I learned from Quran, and I wish and I wish that you also could help 
uh, everybody so that we have a more peaceful world. What is wrong with this? Actually, I think, I think we should entirely get rid of Islam because uh, Islam is dangerous and harmful, as I said. I mean, look, here's the thing. Uh, you cannot uh, counter these points by bringing up anecdotal evidence. And you cannot counter these points by preaching uh, different things in the Quran that seem to be uh, nice. The problem is uh, you want to have a nice, peaceful, uh, loving understanding of Islam. Uh, as I said, the care bear interpretation of Islam. And I like it. I wish that was Islam. The, the issue is even if we grant it that you got it right and 95% got it wrong. I'm sorry, but yours is simply not prevailing. Yours emerged uh, at the very beginning of Islam. and It was always suppressed and defeated as, uh, as the opposite side of extremism. And those who uh, prevailed with the uh, horrible Islam that we have today always called themselves the true ones, the moderates, and the Islamic scholarship has agreed with them forever. And if we look at the Quran, we clearly see why they were uh, in the majority, why they agreed with each other, because the Quran clearly tells people to fight those who disbelieve. It clearly tells people that those who disbelieve are less than cockroaches. It clearly says um, all of these things. So far, I mean, not disbelieve. <laughs> yeah, we, we have already established what that is uh, in, in, in reference to. Uh, the Quran says that uh, those who don't believe in, uh, who, who believe that Jesus is Allah are uh are kuffar and it also says that kuffar are the worst of creatures yeah. the vast majority of christians we have today are people who believe that jesus is god yeah. so according to the quran they are kuffar and they are the worst of creatures they are less than cockroaches i'm sorry you can try to reinterpret this as much as you want and you can try to sell a beautiful and cute islam as much as you want and i would love to see a world where that is what islam truly is i'm sorry but that's not what islam is is the islam that we have is the horrible Islam that you are apparently against and that I am apparently against. And that is the problem. That's why Islam is dangerous. That's why Islam is harmful. That's why it's extreme. And I talked to you, I said that uh, uh, without Islam, we cannot, uh, uh, you know, we cannot get out of this jungle and we will all... We can. We don't need Islam for this. Yeah, we don't need Islam for this. But you don't even believe that the, the, the source of all problems is the jungle and its rules. You don't even believe that, okay? I don't. But, uh, no, you don't. So, so how you are going to get rid of uh, all these problems on this planet? That one percent of the world popul uh, population they they try to become richer and richer and spread uh, all these uh, conflicts and problems uh, on the planet, okay? So that, as, as I said as well, uh, you misunderstand certain uh, verses of Quran, but the complete message, the complete message is that, uh, of course. Uh, Allah uh, knows that uh, without everybody becoming Muslim and believing in Islam, uh, it, we cannot reach that uh, human world, okay? We have to live in this uh, jungle with these jungle rules that everybody kill each other, everybody, because they want to be uh, richer and richer. So that's why is the best, the perfect way is that everybody believe that, yes, okay. this is the problem, this is the source, and that's the solution. Okay. <laughs> I said the communists have the same uh, have the same idea, and uh, mm -hmm. I, I could even argue that your understanding of Islam is a communist Islamic uh, world, world view or a socialist Islam, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you can uh, say yeah, you can say yes, but the, uh, the issue is the issue is the the, the 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 communist propaganda which tells us that we must uh, arm and fight and uh, overthrow the systems of the world which oppress the people. Uh, that that this is the root of the problems and that communism is the solution. They have the same the same understanding. They say yes. the rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer, yes, which yeah. is which is not uh, true, yes. by the way. No, the human, saying, yes. Humans yes. are in general yes. getting wealthier and more peaceful. The world is actually uh, going toward a better yes. uh, direction. Okay. I would not say that humans are inherently uh, you know at fault and that we must fix our ourselves through some weird 7th century ideology. I would say humans are merely beings that are not evil, not good. We are neutral. We are in a world where we try to survive and we try to, uh, you know, use our functions in order to survive and to flourish, as has been established in even in ancient Greek, uh, in, in ancient Greece. And uh, we try to 
find the proper means and try to find ways to live together in order to make each other's in order to make our experience and each other's experience better nowadays through laws that we didn't have in the past in the past islam for example came as a religion and tried to impose its laws which obviously didn't work and will not work today we don't need a, a seventh century scripture we don't need a seventh century uh, understanding of laws in order to fix humanity we simply need to uh, find proper ways to live together, to understand each other, to help each other and ourselves flourish. Islam has nothing to offer the world. Islam has nothing good to offer the world. Islam cannot help the world. Islam cannot help me. It cannot help you. If we allow you to come here and sell Islam to humanity, then we will have the Daniel Hikiki Jews and the Islamic extremists who will also say that I should be killed and that Muslims are proud of that because I left Islam. I'm sorry, that's how it works. I can, give, yeah. I can give you the last word before we jump into the Q&A, Perfect Awa, as we yes. originally had Apostate Prophet get us started. And so if you want to take roughly the same amount of time that Apostate Prophet just took to wrap us up, and then we'll jump into Q&A. Okay. Yes, uh, I would like to say, first of all, uh, about you mentioning uh, communism, say uh, this and that. Yes, <clears throat> communism has right for me uh, in most part, but I've told you as well that uh, they would never be able to establish that uh, uh, human world because their words uh, is from a man and uh, Islam's word is from uh, the, the creator, uh, uh, sorry, the, the creator and uh, <clears throat> that the creator wants us to uh, get rid of this jungle. The jungle is the Satan, the devil, and he has promised us that one day we will, one day we will live in that beautiful world. There are lots of, uh, you know, uh, evidences about that. The Mahdi will come and save us, this Messiah and so on. So um, if anybody would like to ask direct questions uh, later, talk to me more. Uh, they are welcome on uh, my channel as well. I, I have live streams usually. But <clears throat> This is, uh, uh, I wish that you could, uh, um, as I said, uh, AP, if you could uh, fix it, if your, uh, uh, you know, believe or whatever you had a set of belief that could fix all these problems, I would, uh, you know, follow you as well. Uh, I would say that you are a prophet, okay? But unfortunately, uh, that's not the case. And uh, you cannot. Please, please uh, do that. Yeah. Yes, you cannot do that. <laughs> because what you say is uh, just uh, some words. Yes, uh, we have to do this. We have to do that. But you don't know even the source of the problem. Join my cult. Join my cult, everybody. Yes, Thank okay. you. All right. <laughs> Juicy, and want to remind you folks, our guests are linked in the description box. So if you want to hear more from either of our guests, you can find their links down below. And you can also find their links at the podcast episode of this debate, as all of our debates end up on the Modern Day Debate podcast within 24 hours of the debate happening with our guests linked there as well. So if you want to hear more from Impossible Prophet or the Perfect Dawa check those links out and with that thanks so much for your question this one coming in from first one xx wlz xx says hey james let's see okay that will, i'll answer that one in the post credits that one was for me stop scamming man says hello ridvan would you be interested in a moderated debate with pondering soul slash yusef ponders or adnan rashid uh thank you for the question i absolutely would be interested in uh, having debates with them i don't think they are interested in having debates with me <laughs> and i am because, also interested <laughs> because uh I, I, um yeah I, I would be definitely open to that they are traditionalist understandings of islam and they have uh bad understandings traditional understandings of uh, of islam uh, in regards of theology and uh jurisprudence i would love to have a debate with them but i doubt that it will ever happen because they will never agree yeah. Juicy. Uh, can yeah, I say something? From Mr. Monster says, I'm Jewish, so I am a kafir. What will be my fate? Perfect dawah. Uh, as I said, you are not a kafir just because you are a Jew. Uh, uh, I have said uh, kafir is oppression, bad deeds. So if you do bad deeds, even uh, Allah is the most merciful and forgiving. He says that if you, uh, you know, uh, you uh, don't, uh, what is it? Um, not uh, you don't uh, commit uh, bigger sins or major sins i'll forgive your minor sins okay so allah knows that people have uh, the you know special capacity and uh, they might not understand 
So this is the, you are not a kafir just because you believe in something else, according to which we were having uh, this discussion, according to what I was uh, saying. According to you, and, Islam. Yeah, I understand. And I, I was, uh, not only me, uh, there are others as well. I was to going to, uh, yes, uh, I want, uh, uh, not to, <laughs> maybe, I was going to say that, uh, uh, that I wish that you asked that, that doctor, um, who was it, Abdul Majid, you were talking, that he was saying that uh, you're my brother. You should ask him about that uh, hadith, if he believe in that hadith or not, if you reject that hadith or, or, or not. Because uh, I would, I wanted to see his reaction, you know, because they are mostly afraid. Uh, and then I had a debate with uh, one of these traditional uh, scholar, you know, Sheikh Haitam. He's from UK. He's a very extremist, uh, you know, scholar. And he was saying, "Can you imagine yourself?" Okay, that's why I say these people don't understand anything. He was saying that we punish these people like stoning adulterers because we purify them we punish them here so that they are not going to be punished next life excuse me then it is a good because next life is forever this one is very short and i can go and kill somebody and you execute me and i go to heaven <laughs> am i right or wrong but you want to believe that Islam is something nice because you want to believe in it, but unfortunately, that's not what Islam. But is. anyway, you you think yourself that these people, such a people, they use their brain yourself, put yourself, you know, as a believer. That how can somebody thinks like this? That if I stone that adulterer or if I execute this killer, I have purified them. They Islam, Islam doesn't want you to use your brain. That's the problem. That's, oh, that's, no. the, that's the main problem. Okay. All right. <laughs> this one coming in from. <clears throat> Friendly ex Muslim says, How does he know they are forgiven if he doesn't accept Bukhari? Uh, uh, I didn't understand. Can you please repeat it? I again? might be pronouncing the Bukhari wrong. Bukhari, yeah, I know, I know. Yes. Well, what? they said, do, How does he know they are forgiven if he doesn't accept Bukhari? Uh, who are forgiven? I think I think it was in reference to uh, you said that uh, certain people are forgiven after they commit horrible things and they convert to Islam. Uh, but you take uh, these uh, sources from hadiths, such as uh, the strongest is. No, I, okay. Uh, yeah, how, do you, I how do you know these people are forgiven oh my, if you don't okay, accept the sources? So. I, yes, I didn't say that. I'm not a Quranist. Okay, I didn't say that. I don't, uh, you know, accept uh, uh, these uh, hadiths. I said that Quran says that the hadith which goes against Quran, because we know that there are lots of even Bukhari himself, as he says, he rejected six hundred thousand hadiths, fabricated hadiths. So hadiths should uh, there are fabricated and authentic hadiths. How we know which one is fabricated and which one is authentic, okay? It is not about Bukhari who teach me that this one is authentic. It is Quran that teaches me. So when it goes against Quran, it is not in line with Quran, then it is fabricated according Quran itself. It says that those that uh, goes uh, against Quran, then they are not from your Lord. Yes. The problem is you can't know whether the Quran is accurate or not if you don't trust the Hadith. You will verify the Quran's authenticity based, you that. On, based on the Hadith. Yes. That's the I problem. Yes. So how can you, how can you you how can you verify the Quran based on the Hadiths and then verify the Hadith based on the Quran? That, that doesn't work. Uh, no, I told you that uh, I said that, uh, what is it? The, the Hadiths can be fabricated, but Quran cannot be fabricated. Okay, because that doesn't Quran work. I'm sorry. That, that's yeah. illogical. You All got right. it. I'll give you a chance to respond if you have, let's say, I think the original question is for you, Perfect Dawah. So I'll give you the last word on that before we go to the next one. Yes. If you had any uh, last we, response. No, no, I, I answered. I answered the question. You got it. And this one coming in from Bubblegum Gun says, how many have suffered and died to quote unquote stabilize the barbaric Islamist, the neoliberal imperialism West bearing gifts of quote unquote human rights, two faced libs? I don't know what they're getting at. I guess they're trying to uh, present this uh, incredibly imbecilic dichotomy between uh, Islam and modern liberalism. I guess it should be a jab at uh, people who criticize Islam out of modernity. I just want to say this is something very stupid that Daniel Hakikichu does all the time, where he presents this idea that you have either Islam, which is completely pro-human, or you have modern liberalism, Western colonialism, which destroyed humanity. That is, un that is unfortunately 
absolutely idiotic. What we have is not either Islam or, uh, you know, the British Empire with colonialism. What we have is Islam and numerous different ideas. And we can go with numerous different ideas over Islam. <laughs> you got it. This one coming in from Zagros Ozkan says, Perfect Dawa, can you explain An Nisa 34, please? Uh, Anissa 34. The, the, the wife beating verse. Yeah. Ah, the wife beating also, yes. Uh, I will, <clears throat> I will uh, tell you that. Yes. In the meantime, uh, <clears throat> oh, go ahead. Yes, I, uh, I, will, I, I see. Uh, this uh, strike has been used also many times, many different times in, in Quran. Uh, uh, chapter 4, uh, ah, yeah. <clears throat> the thing is that, uh, let me say, for example, chapter 43, verse 5, strike, strike is ignored. Shall we utterly ignore you because you are uh, a wanton fault? Uh, chapter 4, 101, strike is trouble. So the chapter uh, 434, it says that uh, simply uh, leave. Okay, and then chap next chapter uh, 35 says that, and if you fear decision, uh, sorry, dissension between the two and uh, send uh, an ab arbiter, uh, arbiter from his people and an arbiter from her people, if they both desire reconciliation, Allah will uh, uh, cause it between them. Indeed, Allah is um, ever known. Chapter 33, 28 to 29. All prophets say to your wives, if you should desire the worldly life, and it's uh, from 33 to uh, so, uh, chapter 33, from 28 to 30, 31, Allah is uh, talking to his own prophet about uh, his wives. And he, uh, because of their, uh, you know, disobedience and so, he never mentioned uh, to beat them. So the, this uh, beating wives has always been there. And if Allah is for beating wives, he would never mention it because uh, this was what people were doing. Uh, in uh, this lockdown in Mexico, just a few months in lockdown, 1,000 women were killed in domestic violence so this okay, has nothing to do with the question uh, no I, the question is that the answer is that that allah has been trying to uh, seize the situation first do this i'm also a husband i know that if i'm angry with my wife or something if i uh, you know separate my bed tomorrow i will calm down so quran has been trying to you know seize the problem and the uh, quran uh, this strike uh, again i said that uh, this I, I'm, I'm sorry that the whole problem we're, we're going on with this forever but the whole problem is that you are trying to uh to to project your own way of thinking and onto onto what allah said I mean, allah says something and you say no allah would never say that because i know that allah would never do that i'm sorry but the quran verse says no, beat it, beat them it if i now strike, yeah? It says, yeah, it's, it's a, it says strike. I could now say I beat you in this game and I could say I beat two people up yesterday. Uh, I couldn't say, well, I didn't mean I beat them up physically because it also means I beat you in a, in a, in a competition. But, I mean, but why ridiculous. you don't, why you take that? I said that again, chapter three, verse seven, you take uh, interpretation that suit your agenda. I it don't says, take interpretation. I read it yes, exactly as 20, it is. Yes, 20, chapter 20, verse 77, strike is search. Even search. So I said that those verses are unspecific verses of Quran. You have to check, read Quran. It's not unspecific. Just because it a word has different answer, meanings, answer. that doesn't yeah. mean that the, the, that a problematic verse definitely doesn't mean what it clearly says. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Chapter 10, 30, uh, verse 21. Uh, and it is among his signs that he has created for you wives from among yourselves so that you may find uh, tranquility in them. And he, has, yes, and he has created love and kindness between you. Surely uh, in uh, this there is signs for... So Allah uh, talk about love between man and husband. So he knows uh, that beating wife doesn't, uh, uh, you know, 
<clears throat> make love between them. And the, as, as I said, next chapter says that if you if you think that they separate separate after what after he beat her no after they he separated he left her so strike means leave her on their time okay first uh, advise her secondly uh, you know separate your bed thirdly leave her if it doesn't work okay so it's okay. not beating it beating is oppression yeah, the Muslim apologists also think it is very loving to uh, to cut off my head for disbelieving in Islam. Yes, uh, I know. Th but just because they say it's out of love or kindness, it doesn't mean that uh, they also apply these punishments. I'm sorry, okay. but okay. yeah. But uh, again, this is uh, what uh, you uh, want. To believe that uh, Islam is, uh, you know, it is not. This is, this is what Islam is. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. This one coming in from. Do appreciate your question, Zagros. Oh, we got that one. This one coming in from Z Zagros Azkan as well. It says, Perfect Dawah, how do you explain the predestination problem? Uh, which one? Can, can, uh, I think you have been talking about, yes? Uh, uh, AP, yeah? Yeah, yeah, but, I talked about but, that very much. Uh, no, um, I don't believe that uh, it is decided that I will kill somebody tomorrow. No, I have free will, okay? I don't know from where you get these things because I it's think... Yeah, from Quran, Quran, what Quran says that we have decided for you to become a killer or everything is decided. No, there is a free will and you can, uh, what is it? You decide for your good deeds and bad deeds. So Allah has created, Allah says that if he wanted to make them believers, uh, we would do that. We wouldn't send you, O oh, Muhammad, to make the believer. So just deliver the message, okay? So if he wanted, he would create us believers. But he created us with free will so that we can do, uh, you know, according his guidance and reject it. We can accept it. So there is no predestiny uh, destiny, uh, destiny in my belief and what I have learned again. Cute. Yes. Cute. This one coming in That's from, do appreciate your question, XX. WLZ XX says, quote unquote, anti Iranian interpretation perfectly said. And then Saint Beloved says, the perfect Dawa, would you allow your six year old daughter to marry an old man? Is that a good idea for any child? Okay. <clears throat> it is, uh, as I have said before as well, this is from the same source that says Prophet Muhammad is one in Split the Moon, which is both are absolutely uh, fabricated and lies okay so i don't believe that um, prophet muhammad ever uh, you know I, as i said that this uh, source says that uh, quran is incomplete so you don't have to uh, accept everything you hear from these uh, okay, why, why is that body. why is that a fabrication what does it contradict with it uh, because it is uh, you know uh, oppression against that uh, little child according to you that not according to uh, oppression is subjective justice is subjective how is it in contradiction with anything in the quran that muhammad married a child who was 6 years old and married her when she was 9 because uh, as i said it's a you know a violation of a, a child's right that sh uh, she doesn't understand anything yeah according okay. to you and according to me but <laughs> how okay. is that in contradiction with what the quran says it's apparently not uh, oppressive and not unjust according to it Muhammad. is oppressive yeah no uh, yeah, according to you uh, and according to me no, yes according, but not according, according to the quran no, according understanding of quran it is oppression okay Where, how, and, how, 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 how 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 because uh, definitely we understand a, a little child doesn't understand, uh, you know. Yeah, uh, according to you, but is, where, yes. where according to the Quran? Uh, I don't have a specific verse, but... Uh, because uh, there is not. Uh, uh, no, but uh, there are lots of verses that, uh, you know, uh, oppression uh, is, uh, you know... Uh, okay, oh. okay, but... Okay, oppression according to you and according to me, not according to the Quran. That's what I'm saying. It is not in contradiction oh, with the Quran that Muhammad did marry a child and had okay. sex with her when she was a nine-year-old child and he was in his 50s. Okay. But uh, there is no any, uh, you know, uh, verse of Quran that I have to believe in uh, this uh, hadith, okay? That, uh, okay, okay, but the, but the hadith is there is overwhelming evidence that this is a very authentic hadith by Islamic standards. Said, uh, if you yes. if you reject this, then you have to reject a lot of these because uh, this these hadiths I, have many transmitters that are reliable upon which okay. your entire belief depends. No, uh, the uh, there were even first of all, uh, Bukhari says that this person, this person, this person has said it. Okay, even if we take it 
true that this person, this person has said it. There were lots of, uh, you know, or I don't know how many, but there were Hippocrates uh, around Prophet Muhammad. And then later also they change, you know, course, they became, uh, they changed their mind. They even started to fight each other. So they could have, uh, as I said, the Quran then you can't said, trust anything. No, I'm sorry, uh, but the Quran no, says I, in chapter 65, verse four, it says, "And those who no longer expect menstruation uh, among your women, among your wives, uh, and also for those wives who have not yet menstruated." And this was a classical, uh, a verse that has been taken by classical Islamic scholars, uh, okay. taken as a verse that explains that you can be married to women or to women who have not yet had their menstruations and who are okay. uh, who have not reached puberty. I'm sorry, okay. but that's sick. And that's what but there are about. yes, but there are women who never get menstruation, who have problem. So how do you know that? Uh, as I said, chapter three, verse seven. Again, the true meaning of them is known only by Allah and those who uh, are firm in knowledge. Okay, Great. so a child marriage is uh, absolutely wrong, and uh, uh, Islam wouldn't allow that. I agree, and Islam doesn't agree. I'm sorry. Mm. Thank you. All right. Yes. Thank you. This one coming in from, do appreciate your question. My dear brother Ben says to both speakers, what were Muhammad's religious beliefs before he received his first revelation? Uh, I mean, we can't really know, but if you look at the, if you infer based on the knowledge that we have, his family and his tribe were people who were uh, pre-Islamic polytheists and who believed in several uh, deities that were um, worshipped and revered by the pre-Islamic Arabs. Uh, and Muhammad was most likely also a follower of their beliefs, or he believed in certain things that a minority of people believed in Arabia. We don't, we can't know. It's impossible to know. Yes, uh, I guess the same. I, I don't know exactly, but I might have been, <clears throat> uh, you know, they were, um, but definitely he wasn't Muslim. Definitely he wasn't Christian or Jew. <laughs> you know? That's good. That's good. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't think so. But anyway, he, as other prophets also were not uh, believers and God chose them later. So they became believers later. <clears throat> you got it. And thank you very much for this question coming in from saint beloved says the perfect doubt oh we got that one zagros oxcan says by strike them all lament strike them during bowling light <laughs> humiliate them at bullying uh, at bowling Sub <laughs> subhanala how merciful he wants couples to play bowling i think they're giving a parody response and yeah, uh, we'll yeah. give you a chance to respond perfect dawa uh, about what uh, it was a Spyrian says Allah doesn't love anyone except Muhammad in parentheses Allah. Is this true? Allah doesn't like anyone except uh, Prophet Muhammad. You say Allah doesn't love anyone except Muhammad other than oh. Allah. Uh, do you understand what he says, uh, AP? Because well, he says Allah doesn't love anyone except Muhammad. No, just funny. Yeah. <laughs> because I, I would say, says, I, I guess it is. I guess it is a it is a play on uh, the whole idea that Allah does whatever Muhammad uh, wants him to do in the Quran. Uh, Allah is apparently uh, very much concerned about whatever whatever Muhammad wants in his life, and I would agree that that is the case simply because Allah was made uh, up by Muhammad, either because Muhammad was a liar or because he was mentally ill or something. Okay. Uh, another thing. Uh, okay, I, I would say. Uh, uh, about this, that uh, uh, Allah says that uh, we created you from, uh, you know, men and women, and uh, <clears throat> your uh, the best of your front of Allah is the one with the most sacrifice. So it doesn't matter uh, who are you, uh, the most, uh, you know, taqwa is uh, in Arabic, but <clears throat> uh, I can interpret it uh, as uh, sacrifice, okay? for that uh, Allah's way, which is out of this jungle uh, to a beautiful world. And uh, that's, they are the best people uh, in front of Allah. And it's not uh, only Prophet Muhammad, anybody can be that. You got it, and Sahi Luke asked, the perfect awa, it is a proven fact that there are different Qurans. Do you believe the brainwashing by Muslim leaders who still teach others it has been perfectly preserved is harmful? 
um, I didn't. Uh, and you mean, I, I think he meant that the the, the wrong teaching of these uh, scholars is harmful. So we were talking about that. If he meant that. Yes. No, he means uh, we have proof that there are different versions of the Quran. Uh, and do you think that it is harmful that scholars uh, tell us that the Quran has been perfectly preserved instead? Ver different Qiraat uh, <clears throat> or uh, version of Quran. I, I don't believe that there are different versions of Quran, but different Qiraat uh, of Quran. Yes, I have heard it, but... Uh, so do, is, do you believe the do you believe the traditional Islamic narrative that the Quran has been perfectly preserved letter for letter, word for word, from the very beginning? Uh, uh, in perhaps in most part, and uh, the, nothing special that changed the the meaning. Okay, if there has been, because I haven't made research on that. Okay, what I have been concentrated in Islam uh, is about how Islam can guide us out of uh, this jungle we are living aside. Uh, I said to you before that I don't want to live in a world where children are bound, they are going hungry, okay? And I'm looking for a way out of this uh, uh, problem, this jungle, and uh, I found that uh, way out in Islam. So I, I don't think that um, those small things are the, the most important things because the main message is there to get rid of the source of all problems which is the devil and the devil is this jungle and its rules and live equally love one another so that's the main uh, you know uh, message that uh, i'm trying to also maybe you can call it uh, you say that no this is different islam so that's uh, up to you okay I, li I like the jungle i don't know what you have against the jungle the jungle, uh, you like it? You like that people get bound and killed? You do you like no, that? No, I, no, I like the jungle. That's, that's... Uh, so you like, uh, you, uh, but you say what, what I jungle to go. I, I'm, ju I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Right. No, but but anyway, this is uh, this is very serious uh, as well. That that if uh, do you like? The, I'm talking seriously. Do you like this jungle really, or do you you dislike it, AP? I mean, by jungle, you're referring to the human nature, basically. I don't no, no, dislike, no, I'm not I don't sure. dislike no, the no, human nature. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm referring to the jungle and its rules that uh, the strongest one get the most, the weakest one get little or nothing and has yeah, to I, die. I would say that is human nature. I don't, I, we have a different understanding yes, I understand. on, on why yeah, things no. are the way they yes. are. I would the, say it's human nature that people yes, do the things that I understand. they do. I, I don't think I understand. it's easy. I understand. This is human nature. But do you think that we can get rid of not human nature? Get rid of the jungle. Get rid no. of all these problems. We cannot. But there but, is no. There is no solution to all problems in the world. That is a utopia. That's a a, 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 a fantasy understanding of how the world is supposed to function. Okay. We have our human nature, and there is no perfect solution to this human nature. But we can uh, only but, do our best. Yes, but AP, I told you that. Imagine, I mean, uh, five million people die every year from cigarettes because some tobacco companies, they want to become billionaires by selling tobacco. So if we get rid of that source, which is the money, and they cannot become rich on selling tobacco, definitely, uh, you are living 21st century, AP. You understand that they will not produce tobacco. It's very, course, very simple. Of course, it and what we could simple. do is to... What we could do is to uh, is to confront those harmful elements within the system that we have. If we get rid of money and we get rid of competition, then we will have uh, we will we will basically go backward in human development because humans have skyrocketed in development due to competition, due to rewards, due to money, and so on. It, the world doesn't work without a concept of competition, of production, of money. That that's a utopic uh, communist understanding of the world, which right. is futile. It doesn't work. So. Okay. All right. Now I have to tell you, uh, AP, that that's your because you don't see uh, different sides. You don't know much. Okay? Yeah, I'm blind. That, I'm blind. Yeah. It's always because no, no. I'm, blind. I'm not oh. saying that you are blind. You, I say that you have not that information that I have, and I say that only Second World War, because of this jungle, destroyed and stopped humanity from developing a lot. In this jungle, everybody push each other down to go up. China, Russia, all these problems. Uh, you know, uh, for example, it, only my home country, Iran, 
If 1953, USA and UK didn't make a coup d'etat against our democratic uh, elected uh, prime minister, Dr. Mossadegh, and put a dictator in power, we could develop, we could be second Japan. Uh, and that democracy would spread in entire Middle East. Everybody would, uh, you know, develop, everything would yeah, be fine. Yeah. But because they wanted cheap oil, let me uh, fast say, because they wanted cheap oil, they wanted, uh, uh, so that's why they brought down the democratic elected prime minister, put a dictator in power, and result of that was, uh, a blind uh, I know that's, that's very that's very sad but I think the main problem here that we have is that you keep thinking that we all understand things the wrong way and we are all blind and you no, have no, the right right say. understanding and right interpretation of things this is the I second time that you, I didn't say you are what? blind I said that you don't have the right information you okay that, that means I'm blind so I'm sorry no, no, no. <laughs> okay <laughs> okay yes if you think like that you uh, for example you have heard a million times about ISIS Taliban I, th I think we should really move on right James yes. No, just we'll, for, jump into, well, we'll jump into this last please. question. Okay, yes, yes, please. This one, coming in from, and this is appropriately for both, well, actually, no, this one is uh, Perfect Awa. They said, what if Islam, Christianity, and Judaism is are all proven wrong? What would be your religion or faith? Uh, uh, I mean, it's, it's a difficult question because I found the truth in Islam, so... Um, I mean, uh, okay, I, I have to put it in this way, that if I realize, if somebody can prove me that Islam cannot guide us out of this jungle, okay, and <clears throat> Islam is just, uh, I believe, just uh, pray, fasting, you know, then uh, I think that, uh, that God is useless and the religion is useless, okay? So, <clears throat> I, I mean, uh, for me, um, I don't know what else I have to do. I... You know, I want a, a solution to, for example, I can say like this, that um, uh, if, uh, I'm fighting, we have been fighting against this dictator regime in Iran in 42 years, and uh, I've been looking for um, an alternative to this regime. I found this uh, MEK, and I'm following them. If they cannot, uh, you know, bring the, down the regime and bring democracy back to Iran, then um, I don't know what to do. Uh, this is the question is like this. And what to do, I don't know. Can I ask a follow-up question to that to clarify Please. very quickly? Go for it. Um, as I understand it, you are trying to simply evaluate Islam based on whether it can guide humans out of the problem or not. Yes. But what if Islam was clearly proven theologically wrong, like that the theological aspects of Islam clearly don't make sense and that it can't be true? And Christianity and Judaism were also proven wrong. But you still believe that Islam could lead us out of this jungle, as you call it. What would you then believe in? But if you prove me, then I wouldn't believe that this is... Uh, the okay, same. but if, if, we, if we prove that Islam is clearly theologically wrong, you know, the theological aspects of it, like the belief in Allah and Muhammad and uh, the Quran and this and that, would you then, what would you then believe in? I mean, um, because uh, I know that, uh, I mean, I'm right. So it is a, a question which is kind of impossible, okay? So... Um, I, I I have to say like this, that uh, one thing is that um, I have to say that as a person with a uh, lot of experiences and, you know, um, thanks God, enough knowledge, I cannot believe that people of the past, as a bunch of liars, you know, who came and said, I'm prophet of God, okay, because you say simply that they were liars. They came and put their lives in danger to, you know, say these beautiful words to say, for example, uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, said that woman who was going to be stoned to death, uh, Moses, uh, he saved those slaves uh, uh, from Pharaoh, and he uh, gave us nice uh, laws for that time, of course, and, and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, saved children who were bearing alive. Okay, so such a people with all these beautiful words, I say, I, I would love to talk to, um, you know, uh, uh, psychiatrists, uh, sorry, uh, you know, um, uh, psychologists to see if uh, a liar can say all these beautiful words that, uh, you know, 
evil, uh, you know, reply evil with, uh, you know, good instruction, all these things and save children from being, uh, uh, you know. Uh, and then another thing is that I wouldn't believe that uh, an illiterate man 1400 years ago, how I woke up, by the way, that um, Allah exists, God exists, was uh, that when I learned that there is an end to this world and I learned in Hinduism that they believe in reincarnation and this reincarnation continue forever but uh, science says that there is an end to this world okay and these people of thousands of years ago they have said that there is an end to this world and that illiterate man 1400 years ago he didn't even say uh, he even said how it will in end in billions of years <laughs> sorry in billions of years that doesn't really that's 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 not really a good prophecy the issue is uh, i think Many psychologists, I think many psychologists can prove to you that uh, terrible people can say very beautiful things. I listened to a lot of speeches uh, from Hitler and I read a lot of his, uh, his, his, his writings and his transcripts. And he said some very touching, some very emotional, some very beautiful things, which the, the German people of his time were really touched by. And, you, and you could see, you, you, it, it could seem to the average person who doesn't know about what's going on in the world, like this man is really looking out for our best interests. He's doing so many great things. But I'm sorry, uh, the, the the methods that he then employed to do those great things were are, are in front of our eyes, in front of everyone's eyes. And I think the methods that Muhammad employed are also in front of everyone's eyes. They are not pretty. James, can we have like closing statements or something? If you guys are both up for it, I'm willing to do that. Are you guys both good with like a two or three minute closing? Sure, yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. Then let's start with Apostate Prophet and then we can wrap up right after that with the perfect dawah. And I'll set the timer for... I'm going to give you guys as much as three minutes. Okay, I'll do three minutes. Okay, so um, I just, our discussion tonight was um, whether Islam is harmful and whether um, extremists represent Islam. Um, I think it has been quite clear, as far as I see it, that Islam is harmful. It is contrary to the human will to flourish and to seek happiness. It may be that uh, the Islamists themselves and the proponents of Islam themselves also believe that they strive for happiness, for ultimate happiness. They strive for something good. And I grant that they do believe they are doing the right thing. Unfortunately, they are employing very terrible methods which are contrary to the human goal to flourish and to achieve ultimate happiness. Islam's uh, understanding of humanity and Islam's morals put forth through the uh, Islamic scripture and Islamic laws are contrary to human flourishing. They are oppressive. They are, uh, they give us ignorance. They teach us intolerance. They teach us hate. They don't give us anything useful, anything helpful, nothing helpful that can uh, help us today in the 21st century. The world is better off without Islam. We are talking about whether extremists represent Islam. Uh, how do we define extremists? I themselves say we are not extremists they are others are extremists we are actually the right ones but as we can see most of us in the world who are not fooled by their uh, terrible beliefs will will call them extremists because they call for a world in which we are not allowed to think we are not allowed to live freely in which we are not allowed to pursue our own goals and our own happiness a world in which women are not free in which uh, non-muslims are not free in which not even muslims themselves are free uh, and this world is not only represented by isis it is also represented by the regular traditionalist Muslims, by the regular traditionalist understanding of Islam, by the average classical books of Islamic law that we have available today in all kinds of languages. This idea is represented in the Quran, which instructs people to fight those who disbelieve in Allah. It is present in the Hadith, which tells us, which tell us that Muhammad came to fight the people until they testify that Allah is God and that Muhammad is his messenger. This is the belief that teaches us that human life is worth nothing nothing and that all is for Allah and that everything can be done on this pursuit. I'm pretty sure that uh, it is quite evident, quite obvious that this is what Islam is. Islam is extremist. Islam is harmful. As much as I would love to see a world where uh, Muji's interpretation of Islam is uh, dominant, unfortunately, I would say that this is just his personal uh, wish, his personal understanding. It will not happen, unfortunately. And all I want to say is stay away from Islam. 
You got it. We will kick it over to Perfect Awa for his closing as well. Got it set for three minutes. Floor is yours. Yes, uh, I would like to say that um, uh, I wish that everybody would uh, work towards peace. And uh, <clears throat> I'm uh, on your side if you really want to get rid of these extremists, uh, um, people like yes, Hari Gachu and uh, yeah, ISIS and Taliban. We have him on your side. We are fighting them in many, many years. And I'm not alone, as I said. We are millions. And uh, yes, uh, things has been misinterpreted uh, in the past. And uh, these are mostly because of, uh, as I said, many scholars, they have been thinking about their own interest because they didn't want to go against mainstream. Otherwise, they would lose their, their, you know, their job, their followers, and so on. So they uh, took their interest and their own life uh, before uh, you know, their beliefs. <clears throat> but we who do not care about interest, we want to uh, fight these extremists and we want to spread love. And there is no uh, compulsion in Islam, no compulsion in religion. And <clears throat> we have the right only as the last option to fight those who fight us. Okay. And that's as the last option, not the first option. If possible, we have to run away even. OK, so and then we have the right to fight as long as they fight. When they stop fighting, we have to stop fighting, too, because Allah does not like those who start the fight. And um, yes, uh, I wish that um, those who have more questions, uh, they come to me and uh, I will talk to them on my stream. And uh, yes, I don't have more uh, anything else to say. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, you James, for for this opportunity my pleasure and want to say a reminder folks both of our guests are linked in the description we really do appreciate them and that includes at the modern day debate podcast we link our guests ap and perfect dawa as well so want to say one last thank you so much apostate prophet and perfect dawa it's been a true pleasure to have you thank you bye AP. Thank, thank you thank you so much now, thank my you. pleasure the pleasure is all mine and i'll be back in just a moment folks with a post credit scene on upcoming debates, you don't want to miss it. There's also a poll in the chat. What view do you most identify with, Muslim, atheist, Christian, or other? So don't forget to vote on that poll. And with that, I will be back in just a moment, as mentioned. So stick around. Thanks, everyone. Stay with me. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you.